In this video, we're going to review the process of setting up O3DE from the GitHub repository. The specific steps include configuring credentials for GitLFS, forking and cloning the O3D GitHub repo, building our engine, and registering the engine. Before we begin, make sure your system meets the following hardware requirements. Additionally, the following applications will need to be installed and configured for O3DE to run effectively. If you need additional help setting up these applications, please see the description below. The O3DE GitHub repo uses the Git Large File Storage system for storing large binary files. The following instructions will prepare your PC to authenticate and download these files automatically when you clone, fetch, or pull from the repo. Let's begin by creating a folder that will store our O3DE engine files. Within the File Explorer, navigate to the drive where you'd like your O3DE-related files to be stored. Create a new folder and name it O3DE underscore files. Make sure not to leave any spaces in the folder name. For some, having a space in the folder name can cause issues later in the building process. Once created, open a command prompt and have it point to our O3DE underscore files folder. An expedited way of doing this is to simply enter the O3DE files folder and enter the letters CMD in the address bar. Once enter is pressed, a command prompt will open with the current folder set as its current directory. Now let's configure the git large file storage system. Within the command prompt, enter git lfs install. If the output from this command is git lfs initialized, then you already have git lfs installed. If you do not see this prompt, the command prompt will install it for you. Next, we'll verify that a credential manager was set up during the git installation process. Within the command prompt, enter git config credential.helper. Now, recent versions of Git install a credential manager to store your credentials so that you don't have to enter them for every request. Common examples of results to this git config command include manager-core, wincred, osx keychain, and cache. However, if you don't see anything in response to this command, you can install git credential manager core as your credential manager. For more information on how to do this, please see the description below. Now let's begin the process of creating a fork and cloning our repo. Begin by logging into your GitHub account. Next, visit the O3DE GitHub repo page at the following link. Once there, locate and click on the fork button in the upper right hand corner of the O3DE GitHub page. Then click on the create and fork button. This will take you to a page where you can receive additional information about the forking process and adjust the name of your repo. I do not plan to change the name of my repo, so I'll leave it as O3DE. Once you're done, review the page and click on the create fork button located in the bottom of the page. Once pressed, you should be automatically directed to a web page displaying information about the newly created O3DE fork. Let's copy the link to this fork so that we can later clone the repo onto our PC. In the center of the page, click on the code button. Then within the clone pop-up window under the HTTPS section, click on the copy icon. Now let's return to our command prompt to begin the cloning process. Make sure that your command prompt is currently pointing to our O3DE files folder. Enter the following git command to clone your O3DE repo. Note that you should replace the git username section of this command with your git username. Once completed, you should receive a similar output indicating that all files had been cloned. Next, let's verify that we have all the LFS files from the endpoint. Change directories into our O3DE folder, then enter the git LFS pull command. If you do not receive a prompt indicating that the files are being updated, then you're currently up to date. In order to pull updates from the O3D repo directly into our local clone, we need to add a remote to track the upstream repo. We do this with the following command. Now let's verify that the upstream repository using the get remote v command. You see the URL for the fork as the origin and the URL for the original repository as the upstream. Now that we have a local copy of the O3DE source code, Let's build the engine, including key tools such as Asset Processor, O3D Editor, and Project Manager. To prepare to build the engine and projects, you can choose from one of the following build types based on the primary focus of your development workflow. There's Source Engine, which you would choose to build in this type if you plan to make frequent changes to the engine source code. And then there's the Pre-Built SDK Engine. This build type is used if you're primarily interested in project development and you plan to make only infrequent changes or no changes at all to the engine. In this video, we're going to focus on the source engine approach. Let's return to our command prompt. Using the make directory command, let's create an O3DE-packages folder in our O3DE files folder. We can return back to File Explorer to see 
that the new O3D packages folder has been created effectively. Later, we'll use this folder to retrieve external libraries needed for the engine. Next, we need to get the Python runtime, which isn't included in the GitHub repo. This runtime is required to run common command line functions. Make sure that your command prompt is currently pointing to your O3DE folder. Next, let's run our Python bat file by typing the following command. If installed successfully, you'll receive the following output. Now we'll use CMake to create the Visual Studio project for the engine. You can use the following command to supply the build directory, the Visual Studio generator, and the path to the packages directory that you created. If your primary development environment is Visual Studio 2019, make sure to change the Visual Studio generator command to 16 instead of 17. Using Visual Studio 17 in your generate command indicates that you're using Visual Studio 2022 for your primary development environment. We know that Visual Studio project was generated correctly when we received the following output. Next, we'll use the following command to build our engine. Note, depending on the specifications of your hardware, this can take some time. Next, we need to register our engine. We register the engine with the following command. By doing this, we enable O3DE projects to find the engine, even when they exist in different locations on your computer. The registration process creates or updates the O3DE manifest file in your user directory. For instance, my directory can be found at the following path. When we observe the top of the manifest file located on my system, you can see paths to both the project files as well as the engine directory. Now that we have our engine registered, let's ensure that we have successfully completed the previous steps. We do this through the creation of our first project. If you followed the steps in this video, you can find the editors executable at the following path. Locate and double click this file. This will open your project manager. Once open, click on the create a project button. This will open the enter project details window. In the project name section, let's name our test project, my project. Additionally, we can add or remove gems from our project by clicking on the configure gem button in the bottom right corner. For the sake of clarity, gems are packages that contain code and or assets to augment your Open3D engine project. For more information about gems, see the description below. Let's return to our project details window by clicking the back arrow in the upper left hand corner. Next, let's click on our create project button in the bottom right hand corner. We'll receive a pop-up notifying that we need to build our project. Confirm this selection by clicking the OK button. The project manager will now display a new My Project tile. In order to build the project, locate and click on the Build Project drop-down button. Within it, select the Build Now option. A building My Project pop-up window will appear. Click the Yes button to confirm your build choice. Once our project has completed the build process, let's open it by clicking on the Open Editor button on the My Project icon. A O3D editor splash screen will appear, indicating what assets are currently being loaded by the asset processor. For more information about the asset processor, please see the description below. Once the necessary assets had been processed, the editor will open. This concludes the tutorial on how to install O3D from GitHub. Stay tuned for future O3D related videos. Thanks for watching.